All right, in this video, I'll cover how to change the front timing case uh, gasket on a 6.7 Cummins 2007 and a half uh, through 2024. Uh, this particular truck is a fourth gen of the 2018 uh, 6.7 Cummins, uh, but it's the same across all the all model years. Uh, the problem typically manifests itself as a uh, some sort of oil leak at the front. It's usually not the stamped steel cover, that the outer portion. It's usually the inner uh, cast aluminum ca timing case uh, that butts up against the block. The gasket gets pulled in and ca causing it to leak. It's pretty typical. It's a pretty typical problem, and it's a pretty big job because you got to take off. All the front accessories, the grill, the radiator, uh, the upper valve train, pull the cam out. It's, it's a pretty big project, but we'll go through it all in this video. Okay, so you start this project by popping this upper uh, radiator shroud cover off. There's a couple clips here, 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 and there's one on the other side. There's four of them. Um, once you get this cover off, you're then gonna move to the grill. Uh, there's four screws across the top here. Then you just grab it on either side and you pop the whole grill out. Once you get the front clip disassembled, then you gotta start with some screws to remove the, uh, the air intake box. You'll have to loosen the band. You'll have to lift this whole box out, disconnect a couple sensors. And then you'll also wanna disconnect it uh, back here or down at the turbo, whatever's easier. Take this whole thing out, get, get it out of the way. It's gonna make things a little easier. Um, after you do that, then you can move to the, the fan shroud. Um, this, is, this is a little tricky to get out. There's, a, there's bolts on top, here, here, and then there's two more on the bottom. You gotta get the whole, you gotta take the whole shroud out. Once the, once the shroud's out of the way, you can then move on to uh, disassembling the accessory drive. You'll have to take tension off the belt You'll take the belt off, then you'll move from top to bottom, removing the idler pulley, the tensioner. Um, you'll have to take the power steering pump off, just swing it out off to the side. You don't need to disconnect the lines. Uh, you'll have to take the water pump off, and then at the bottom, you'll have to take off the, uh, the harmonic balancer. That's held in with four bolts. You're gonna have to break it loose uh, with, with one ratchet and then you're gonna have to hold the, the engine uh, so it doesn't spin over with it with the other one. And once you have that, once you have the accessory drive disassembled, you also have to remove the, the fan. Uh, the easiest way to remove the fan is gonna be, uh, Harbor Freight sells a, a fan clutch tool. Um, it's put it on a, an air chisel and it beats it over and it breaks the fan uh, clutch loose you can just spin the fan off. That, that, that makes it much, much, much easier that you're not having to fight it with a wrench. It's the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. This is what it should look like once you have the front grill pulled, the upper cover off, and you can see that the bumper's also been removed at this point in the project for me. This picture shows you a good view of what you need to remove. The upper idler pulley, You'll swing the power steering pump out after removing a couple bolts. You'll also have to remove the fan clutch pulley, the harmonic balancer. You'll pull the belt off of the alternator, the water pump, and the tensioner. The water pump will get removed with two bolts, and then the tensioner will also get removed. All right, so once, you, once you've got all the accessories pulled off and you've assessed what you need to do to the timing case, you got two different options in order to get the cam out in either uh, pull the, the bumper and the entire radiator core support. That's option one, which is when I did it, that was the option I chose. I'm not sure if I do it again that way, just because it, it was a lot of work. The core support goes back up under the fenders. It's a pretty in-depth project to pull the core support. Or option two, in order to give yourself enough room, is once you have the radiator out, you'll take the motor mount bolts out on both sides, so you'll uh, allow the engine to be lifted, you'll loosen the transmission mount bolt, and then you'll lift the engine slightly so that it clocks the, the camshaft to come up slightly and through the opening in the core support where the radiator was. You'll just have to choose um, which one you're more comfortable with. So, like I said, my decision at the time was I pulled the core support. Uh, that seemed to be the easiest option to me. I got all the accessories off, 
this is what it should look like once you're complete, removing all the accessories. At this point, you're ready to pull the stamp steel cover. All right. You done with this air gun? We got the uh, harmonic balancer off. About to pull the front cover and see, see where we're at. Once you remove all the bolts, you can pull the stamp steel cover off the timing case. You can also see that I have the air conditioning condenser, the transmission cooler, and the power steering cooler swung out of the way with the radiator core support move to facilitate pulling the cam out now that it has been exposed. Once you have the outer stamp steel cover off, you can investigate the source of the leak. Almost always, it the gasket gets sucked into this cast aluminum case on the left hand side. You can see here where the red arrow is that the gasket is pulled in, almost not sealing the case at all. This is what you need to look for. There's, for some reason, this side of the case gets loose as well as the top portion. So you can see the gasket is like all the way pushed in right there. And it's about to fail in the other spot. You, you really shouldn't see much of the gasket, maybe just the very edge. It's not, it's not a wide gasket, but it definitely needed it. I mean, this thing's nice and oily. So once you make your decision on how you're gonna get the cam out, the first thing you need to do is you need to take the, the crank case filter cover off. There's a couple small bolts. You'll pop, you'll undo those. You'll remove some sensors towards the back. You'll lift this off, you'll lift the filter, um, and you'll take that part off. Then that'll open up um, uh, access to removing the valve cover. There's only, it's only held on by six bolts. You remove the six bolts, there's two, two, and there's two more in the, in the, in the, in the very back. You take the six bolts on the valve cover off. You'll, you'll uh, then remove the valve cover and expose the valve train. Um, at this point, you want to be on TDC number one, um, which is the harmonic ba balancer directly up and down. There's a mark. And then you'll start taking the, the valve train out from front to back, loosening all the rockers and taking the rockers, the bridges, the stands, everything out front to back. You want to keep everything in order, so lay it all out on a table. Um, so that you can track what you're doing. And the push rods need to come out. All the push rods need to come out from front to back. Those need to stay in order too with the corresponding cylinder intakes, uh, stay in the intake position, exhaust, stay in the exhaust position. So we got the front cover off and the valve cover off. Got to start pulling rockers to get this cam out. Keep everything organized. Once you have all the rockers, stands, bridges, and push rods out. This is something what it should look like when you're all done pulling the valve train. Well, that escalated pretty quick. Got the whole core support pulled. All the valve trains pretty much out. Getting ready to pull the lifters up, and then we'll uh, go after the cam. Once you have all the valve train out, you're arguably at the hardest part of the project. You're gonna to have to use half inch wooden dowels. I got them from Home Depot. You're gonna to have to cut them for the first four cylinders to approximately 14 inches. For cylinders five and six, you're gonna be around 12 or 13 inches because you have to fit underneath the cow. There's two plugs underneath the cow that you're gonna to need to pull out so that you can fish in the wooden dowels for cylinders five and six. Working front to back, you're going to have to shape each wooden dowel at a 45 degree angle. You'll place them in the push rod hole. Once you have good suction on the dowel to the lifter, you'll then gently tap the wooden dowel into the push rod cup and then verify that you can actually lift the lifter. I like to put all the dowels in first. Once you have all the dowels fitted, then you'll have to move on to actually pulling the lifter up and then side loading the lifter with a rubber band. The rubber bands will hold the lifters, both the exhaust and the intake lifters up and in place while you remove the cam. Okay, we got all the wood dowels all set up. About to pull the cam out. Wish me luck. You can at that, this point pull the cam out. It is going to be very stressful because if you drop a lifter, 
then you're going to be jacking the motor up and pulling the oil pan. Obviously, you can tell by the picture that I was successful. I got it out. The last cylinder, cylinder six to five, is a little bit challenging because you have almost no leverage on the cam at this point. Just go slow. You're going to have to pick up on the cam more than you think so that it goes through the boss for that cam bearing between cylinders six and five. Take your time, spin the cam, be gentle. Once you have the cam removed from the engine, you'll want to use a piece of inch and a quarter PVC pipe as a safety precaution to hold the lifters up in the event they fall. Once you do that, then you can remove the gear from the CP3 fuel pump. There's a large nut that you'll need to remove, and then you'll be able to remove the gear from the pump, which frees up the cast aluminum timing case. There's about five bolts that hold it in from this point. You'll remove those five bolts and carefully pull the case off. Once everything's removed, you're ready to clean the surface of the block as well as the inner side of the timing case. Once everything's cleaned up, you're then ready for reassembly. My recommendation is that you use an OEM gasket that are by far the, by far the highest quality. The part number on the one from Dodge is 68700302. AA-1. That's the one you're going to want to use. Okay, we got the front cover back assembled. I had to cut a piece of the oil pan gasket. I splice in a piece, use some silicone, got the one, two, three, four, five inner bolts back in. I also just set it with some of the outer cover uh, pass-through bolts. Uh, we got the CP3 mounted on the back. Um, we're getting ready to lube the cam up and stab that back in. Got the cam back in. Whew, man, what a job. All right, so I got the case reassembled. I got the bottom ones torqued to 18 foot-pounds, the five inner ones, and the cam retaining plate torqued to 18 foot-pounds. Uh, all the through bolts are through the case just to keep everything lined up. Uh, I got the gear for the, the fuel injection pump, the CP3 back on. That is 30 foot pounds. Uh, all, everything's all timed. Now we're moving on to reassembling the top end, kind of lubing things as I go. I got all the push rods in, checking that the bottom of the push rod is seated in the lifter. Uh, prior to assembling the rockers, I'm going to go through and uh, just hand tighten everything. So the way that I like to do this, is I like to put all the pieces in from the bridge. Set one, get the other one. Set that one in there. Then we'll separate it from the pedestal. Just lay these there. Get the pedestal. Set that just loosely in there. All right, now just make sure everything's like, doesn't have any dirt on it. It's all got old oil on it, so it really doesn't need more lubrication. All right, set that on there. Make sure that the the ball from, uh, from the rocker is in the socket of the lifter or the push rod. And you just hand tighten these. Then you do the same thing for the other rocker. Set it in there. Make sure it you know you got positive engagement on the uh, on the push rod socket and then you just kind of hand tighten it down and everything's lined up on the bridges those are all sitting in place and you just kind of tighten these as you go so I got the valve cover back on the crankcase filter and cover back on here's all the information uh, for adjusting the rockers, you basically set it on uh, top dead center for cylinder number one and adjust the intake and exhaust valves listed on the cardboard. And then you spin it 360 degrees, put it on cylinder number six, top dead center, and then you can adjust those valves. Uh, the jam nut for the rocker arm is, uh, well, the rocker arm adjuster is 18 foot pounds. The rocker arm itself is 27. And then the desired valve lash on the intake side 
is 0 0.010 and then on the exhaust side the desired lash is 0 0.026 um, so you can get through everything in just two rotations it's pretty easy if you have your case open uh, like right now it is at tdc number one you'll crank it over uh, 360 degrees and then this mark will be approximately up here and that means you are at TDC for number six and you can do the second sequence. <laughs> I'm getting ready to put the cover back on. I did a wear sleeve. It wasn't too bad. I got the wear sleeve on already. There's the specific seal. Uh, the kit you're going to need is that is the oil seal uh, that goes in the cover. And then this is the kit, the installer for both. This is the installer for the actual seal and the cover. And this drives the wear sleeve on the snout of the crank. I found this on eBay, like super cheap. Uh, some other sites have it really expensive. Um, so go on eBay, work pretty good, legit stuff. All right, I got the front cover on. All those bolts get torqued to 18 foot pounds. Just do like an alternating pattern, like one side to the other, you know, kind of like you do with a wheel. I use this Motorcraft. RTV sealant recommended by Thoroughbred Diesel. Worked pretty good. It was pretty easy being able to use a caulk gun. Spreading it was a little easier than just using a tube. So I definitely recommend that. And then I went with the wear seal uh, and wear seal gasket. One piece of advice when siliconing the stamp steel front cover that goes on the timing case. The RTV or whatever your choice of sealant needs to be laid on very thick. Uh, I had an issue when I did mine. I didn't lay it on thick enough in certain spots and I had to go back, tear everything apart and re-silicone everything. So you want to use a very generous bead to make sure it seals the surface of the stamp steel cover up against the aluminum timing case. Once you have the case sealed up, you'll install all the front accessories in the reverse order that you removed them from. This is also a good time to change your belt out as you have very easy access to change that out with all the accessories off. Now you'll have to reassemble everything that you took apart. If you remove the radiator core support, you got to put that back in. At the very least, if you just pull the radiator, you got to reinstall the radiator, reinstall the radiator hoses, and also reset the transmission uh, cooler, the uh, power steering cooler, and the air conditioning condenser. Obviously, you'll need to refill your radiator once that has been all connected back to the engine. There she is. Sounds good. Once you've everything buttoned up, you're going to need to heat cycle the truck and burp the, uh, the coolant. You'll need to fill, fill the truck with coolant until it's full. It's also a good idea to, once you've heat cycled the truck several times, to change the oil and the oil filter. Once you've got everything up to temperature and, you know, flushed everything out that you may have gotten in the truck with working within the front cover. I hope this video is helpful. It's definitely a large project, but it can be done by a DIYer with some basic tools and some mechanical knowledge.